Hey, welcome back to Business 150, Introduction to Management. We are looking at Module 6, and in this module we're looking at planning, decision-making, strategy, a lot of the things that have to do with the very first function of managerial life, planning and decision-making. And so when we look at this particular video, what we're considering is, as you can tell from the title slide, the topic of implementation, actually implementing the plans that you have created to accomplish your goals. And so we hope that at the end of this video, you'll be able to discuss in some ways how plans are implemented in the real world and perhaps what are the things that are really crucial in being able to build a track record of executing and delivering on the plans and goals that are your responsibility. So when we talk about creating the plan, remember we've talked about setting up goals and the importance of that. And so we then go about as managers creating the actual plan to get those goals accomplished. The plan is the document that designates methods, timeframes, alternate procedures, who is going to implement it, what kind of resources are needed, how you're going to deploy them, who will be in charge of what aspect of the plan, etc., etc. And the process of creating a plan can be broken down into basically four steps. Determining what are the alternatives? What are the alternative ways of accomplishing this goal? What are the possible options you have in front of you to deliver on the goals that you are responsible for? And then evaluating the reasonableness, how plausible, how accomplishable, what are the odds of each set of alternatives? And then, only then, once you have really weighed out what are the possible choices, you select the alternative that appears to you based on your experience, wisdom, and insight into not only the situation, but the people who will be implementing the plan, selecting the wisest and most appropriate alternative to accomplish the goal. Once you have done that, it is then a question of specifying the steps. What will happen first? what will happen next, what steps may be on, for instance, the critical path. What is the critical path? It means that if step three is absolutely crucial, and it's crucial because step four cannot happen until step three is finished. Those are the kinds of things you need to consider, all these very specific particulars, when you are trying to carve out and establish and create the various steps in the plan that you have chosen. From here, we get to, to the all important step of execution or implementation. And this is where we go, of course, from thinking to doing. So very easy to write on a slide, so very difficult and tricky in real life because it requires the coordination of people and their schedules, resources, both resources available to you inside the organization as well as perhaps resources which rely upon people or organizations outside of your company and all these kinds of activities together and this is quite frankly where many 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 plans come undone because the planner the executor has not anticipated all of the possible challenges and difficulties in coordinating people schedules resources and activities the key here is this very last bullet point given to you, requiring realistic decision making at each step of the implementation. What does that mean? It means realistically taking into account what people you are leveraging and using in this plan, who are they and what are their typical tendencies and habits. Has this key person in your plan have a track record of always delivering on time and under budget? Or is the delivery track record, the history, quite frankly, a little more spotty than that? And therefore, what will you do if a particular step doesn't come about the way that you'd hoped it was? Well, there is, of course, the old saying, hope for the best and plan for the worst. In other words, if step two doesn't happen the way that you need it to, how will you recover? What are your alternate backup plans and how will you adjust? These are all things that wise, experienced planners take into account as they are in, right in the midst of trying to implement and assign tasks to people, deploy resources in appropriate sequence and fashion and time, 
all these things requiring very realistic appraisals of the people and the resources and the schedule, the history, the track record, who you can trust and rely upon, and perhaps who you have to have a backup plan for. This is really the key that we find in real life of true implementation of plans and schedules. And as a result, one of the things we need to do once we end up with the results of an executed plan is to assess the outcomes. And so as you see here, this feedback loop diagram provides what we hope is the framework for a well done assessment of the outcomes that resulted from the plan. So the company learns which goals are possible and which, well, quite frankly, might not be, at least not at this time, as well as which steps can be implemented easily and which cannot. What is a feedback loop? You see it right there. You execute on something, you do something, you finish and complete one step of your plan, and then you measure to see, well, was this accomplished the way that we thought it was? Did we get the results we wanted? Do we get all the results we wanted? We are then called to analyze the measurements and interpret them, and if need be, to provide solutions to correct where we fell short the next time. Then we repeat it, and then we see what happens. And you see what happens, this feedback loop. This feedback loop informs us and helps us to maintain our forward movement as a learning organization because we can make the very true claim, no one learns from simply experience. We learn from reflecting on our experience, learning what worked, taking away what we know will be successful the next time, as well as what has not been so successful and what we need to change the next time. Anyone who has ever stubbed their toe on the same couch twice knows we don't necessarily learn from experience. We learn from reflecting and learning from our experience. This then is the basic steps of how implementation of plans happens in the real world. Plans are useless unless they are successfully implemented. These perhaps give you at least the basic framework for actual implementation. We hope this has been helpful for you. We'll see you in the next lecture.